Hey guys, I'm Aaron, and today we're going to talk about a problem that people run into in SketchUp sometimes and how to fix it. That is the problem of Z fighting. So, simply put, Z fighting is when there are two surfaces or surfaces and edges that are in the same spot, and the graphics engine kind of fights and figures out which one should be in front, which one you should see and which one you shouldn't. And uh, it's never perfect. A lot of time it causes things like flickering lines or surfaces to happen in your models. Everybody who's used SketchUp has run into it at one point or another. Sometimes it's important, sometimes it's not important. Depending how you model, you might never even come across it. Uh, but we're gonna talk about what it is and how to deal with it if you run into it in your model. Let's hop in. All right, so I'm gonna, I have this floor framing model to use as an example, but before we even get there, I'm just gonna create a quick Z fighting mess right over here. So I'm gonna create one face, I'm gonna make it into a group, and then I will draw another one right next to it, and uh, I'm gonna come into this one, and I'm just gonna put like a red color on it, and then I will make that into a group. All right, so normally, as you zoom in and out, of a face like this, nothing nothing happens, right? This is what it should happen. As I orbit around, as I move, nothing happens. But if I take these two faces and I cross them over each other, as I orbit or move or zoom, you can see every time it moves one pixel, the graphics engine figures out each of these, you know, every single pixel that happens in this overlap, should it be white or should it be red? And it's figuring that out constantly. And this is Z fighting, this is clipping. This is when two faces, we call it Z fighting, it can happen on the X or Y uh, axes as well. It could, these could be angled at 45 degrees, it would still happen. But this is when two graphic entities occupy the exact same space and the engine's figuring out which one to show. So let's talk simply about this. If this is the situation, I have two faces and one should be shown above the other, this white should be above the red, then the thing I need to do is just exactly what I would do in real life. Take the white one, we'll move it vertically, and then no Z fighting because the white is now above the red. There's not a question of which one it should show in front of the other, right? So right now it's just showing that. The other option, if for whatever reason, these two were supposed to be exactly the same, then what I'd probably wanna do is come into the red one and cut out the red. Delete that. Now my red is a rectangle around my white and they show it'll show up the way it's supposed to. Putting two faces between or in the exact same location isn't something I can do in real space, right? Because objects occupy space and two objects can't occupy the same space. So it's not an issue in real life. What you have to do is as you're thinking about how you're modeling in SketchUp, Think about how this works in real life. In real life, there are not two edges. There's always space between two faces. So you just have to make sure you model that way. So that sounds good, but let's talk about where we run into some examples. I'm gonna undo a couple times. And I'm gonna put this white one back over the red and I'm gonna move it vertically again. So I'm just gonna move it up and we'll just go like a quarter inch, I don't know, something like that. Teeny, teeny little space, so a little bit of offset. Now, this looks good right now, but watch what happens as I start to zoom out. The further out I get, the further out I get, further out I get, further out I get. Looks good. I'm just noting this, just note this. Notice, notice that two faces like this respect each other if there's a physical space between. Now, we're gonna jump over here and talk about edges. Note that for later. So if I look at my edges, so let's look at, so here I have this joist here, right? So I have a line, a white space, and another line that represent the top of the joist. As I start to move back, sooner or later, this black, white, black is going to turn into just a solid, thick black line. So right about there. See, I can't see the white between it anymore. It just kind of goes, goes together. Again, this is a graphic engine thing. This is how it's figuring out how to sh use the pixels, color the different pixels on your screen to show you what's happening there. And as I get further out, things start to blend together and I start to get less detail. If I go out far enough, it's just turned to a black blob. So that's okay. But this is lines 
do behave slightly differently than what I have with two faces overlapping each other. And here's that, which again, that is okay, but it's relative to what I'm about to show you next. So let's say we put some sheathing on here. I want to come in with a rectangle. I'm going to come here and I want to pull it this way. And I'm going to say it is uh, four foot by eight foot. And there we go. That's a sheet of plywood. We'll pull it up to like uh, three quarters of an inch. And I'm going to triple click and make it into a group. All right, looks good, right? Now my sheathing cover, and we're not even talking about materials. Materials don't affect whether we get bleed through or Z fighting or anything else. Um, we'll just keep it all the same white color and it looks pretty good, but notice what happens. Now I start to zoom out. This is three quarters of an inch thick. The bottom to the top is three quarters of an inch, but as I start to zoom out that little, so same as we get like, so, so there's the white line of the side as I start to go out, it turns all black. And then shortly after that, look what happens. The edges of the joists start to peer through. See that right there, how those joist edges come through. So what's happening is it's all about relative distance. So when I look at this here, the distance between the line that's under here that continues here is three quarters of an inch away from up here. As I zoom out, that three quarters of an inch relative to where the camera is, is severely small, right? So the difference between those two is marginal, nothing, nothing really. And I end up seeing those lines occupying the same space as this, the volume of my sheathing. So this does happen. And when you have geometry and you start making it going small, you're going to see stuff like that disappear or, or appear, excuse me. Um, I'm just going to do this real quick. I'm going to add a couple more pieces do that. And then we'll grab these two and we'll do another course right down here, mid, midpoint. And then we'll grab all those and then option down to here. All right, so now we have a bigger mess, basically is what I made. So as I zoom out, same thing, looks good, looks good, looks good, and then eventually our edges will start showing through. So sometimes people get very concerned about this. So with the surfaces overlapping and the surfaces scaling, that we work that out pretty easy. If you do have two faces that are on each other, you gotta figure it out because that's how it happens in real life. Over here, we're modeling like real life, right? Because this is how thick the material is, this is how it should look. Um, but when I zoom back, it starts to disappear. Well, there's a couple, I have three options for you as far as how you can fix, this is actually called bleed through, of the joists bleeding through the surface. And this happens anytime you start building components up and have different pieces, especially small or thin pieces relative to the size of the model. The first option you have is just ignore it. It's not hurting anything, it's not breaking anything. If my actual output through layout or whatever else is gonna be something along these lines where it's not bleeding through in my drawing, then I don't have to worry about it for output. Yeah, if I zoom way out like this, it shows up, but you know what? I'm probably not gonna be doing a whole lot of work from this view. If I'm in here trying to manipulate sheathing from this far out, I got other problems. The bleed through is not a big deal compared to the inaccuracies I'm gonna create by trying to model from out here. If I zoom in here to a realistic spot to, to work, then I don't see the bleed through anymore and it shouldn't be an issue. So option number one is deal. It might not look perfect in every situation, but for the most part, this is fine and it's not gonna cause a problem when I start talking about output or working in my model at a realistic zoom. The second option is to turn off the things that you don't want to bleed through. So in this case, if I finished all my sheathing, got all my sheathing in there, I could come up to my tags and turn my framing off, which would give me just my sheathing when looking down from above. Now in this case, that got a little bit weird because all my rim board and everything went away also. I might have to be a little more select with how I group things. Maybe my rim pieces are on a different tag than the, the pieces in the field. It, that's, that's your, your call on how you want to do that. But based on organization, you may be able to turn those off so that you don't get bleed through even when you zoom way out. So you can see it come out this far and it didn't uh, bleed through because it's not there. Speaking of not being there, let's talk about the third option. This is a little crazy. Bear with me here. This is We're going to get a little nuts. One of the options we could do is I could 
come into this joist, I could grab my eraser, hit my modifier key to hide, and get rid of the edges on the top. Oops, got my modifier key that time. Oops, all right, come in here. So I could do something like that. And then what that's gonna do is, again, I only did it on these pieces right here, but as I zoom out, you'll see they don't peek through anymore because they're not really there. I can still see them when I look down because my profiles are still putting edges on there. I can still see the white surface of the face, but they do go away when I zoom out like this. They don't, they don't cut over the, the sheathing because the edges aren't there. That is, I, in this particular instance, I wouldn't pursue that solution. That's, this is kind of a weird example to try to do that in specifically, but, uh, Depending on your model, if you have edges that don't need to be there, you're not going to even see them anyhow, you might try just softening or smoothing or hiding them and see if that fixes your problem because that'll prevent those edges from being there to bleed through. Um, in this case, like I said, the edges are pretty much what make up this joist, right? <laughs> it's, it's basically a rectangle when you look at that on it from above. So getting rid of it could be pretty awkward. But that is an option in some cases where I've maybe geometry of like a wrapper or something goes around a thing, I might be able to just turn or smooth edges so they don't bleed through. But another option. But there you go. That's a quick explanation of what Z fighting is, how bleeding works, bleed through works, and then how you might go about fixing it. It's one of those things that especially, uh, uh, it, it's not a simple thing to put your finger on like this is exactly, this is gonna happen in this one, this is, it has to do with camera angle. It has to do with scale. It has to do with thickness of materials. It has to do with colors. It, all that stuff plays into how Z fighting and bleed through work. Um, but this is a pretty good, I think, way to think about it and, and where you might want to clean it up or where it's, where it's important where it's not. Like I said, ignoring it's always an option. A lot of people who are newer to SketchUp, haven't seen it before, see it, think there's something wrong and try to go through and fix and start deleting and throwing stuff out. Don't do that. It's just a visual artifact. Again, like I said, in a lot of models, it might happen when you zoom way out, but if you're not zoomed way out, it's fine. And in that case, don't even worry about it. Um, but uh, yeah, but that's what it is. That's how it works and uh, how you can get around it. If you like that video, click like down below. And if you haven't already, please do subscribe. We create several videos each and every week and you'll be notified of all of them if you subscribe. Most importantly, they'll leave us a comment down below. Has this bit you? Uh, do you have a different way of getting around Z fighting or bleed through? Let us know that in the comments. Or if you have an idea for a video, if there's something that you've run into or you're curious about how to model something or don't know how command works, let us know that in the comments too. That helps us make the best video possible. We like making these videos a lot, but we like them even more when they're showing something you want to see. Thank you.